good evening to you from Pelton Hook Cottage. It's um, it's quarter past eight here in the west of Ireland, and um, it's very still. There's a beautiful stillness. There's birds still singing and bees still working, as you can hear. Now it's a little bit chilly this evening. <clears throat> So much so that I have lit the stove. There's the stove going over there. And there's a few things I want to say. First of all, before I, before I go any further, I want to thank everybody who has subscribed to this YouTube channel. Um, it's been astounding, just astounding. Because on the 2nd of August, there was um, 4,000 subscribers to Belton Cottage. And I thought that was just amazing. Because, um, you know, I, I don't expect Belton, I never expected Belton Cottage here in the west of Ireland to suddenly become so popular or so well known. It has amazed me a little bit because I haven't really pushed it as such and I don't have advertising on the channel or anything like that and you don't see my face on the channel um, and I'm not pushing anything at all really and uh, plus the fact that I am a much older woman, I am a grandmother, I'm 61 so there's no huge um, magnet um, attraction going on here. Uh, so it's, it's just been really amazing. Anyway, the 2nd of August, there was 4,000 subscribers. This morning, when I go to open up YouTube, there's 7,000. <laughs> I'm, I'm astounded. Happily astounded. I mean, I'm delighted that there are so many people who see what I see. See what I see. Which is very simple. I see Mother Earth. Just going to close this up a little bit. Oh, it's getting very hot. There we go. Um, so, I wanted to just, you know, um, show you around uh, my home and the way I live a little bit more. So I'll just put on the main light. First of all, um, I have this little wood burning stove here in the sitting room and it's a tiny little one as I've explained before but it does put out a powerful amount of heat it's 6.2 kilowatts I've only just lit it and it's already roasting hot now I've got three sofas here in the sitting room one is a sofa bed that one over there but here's what I do to keep warm which I, th I just think is a brilliant idea because people who've come to stay here have felt a, a sense of cosiness in this. I keep lots of pure wool. These are Irish woven blankets. These are pure wool blankets. And there's a pure wool shawl. I just put it into the light. It's a beautiful blue one. And this has been woven up in Donegal. It's very, very soft. It's beautiful. Um, this is another woolen sort of shawl type blanket. Um, this is a lovely one from, I think this one is from Tibet or somewhere. It's, it's alpaca, which is beautifully soft. Um, here on the back of the sofa is uh, one of my crazy hand knits. It's actually a ginormous shawl, and you can just see the shape of it there. I love anything in wool 
a hand knitted and wool. Then here there's um, a big patchwork quilt and that's for really really cold nights you can get cozied up in the sofa and then I'll just show you out here because as I said wool is a huge um, passion of mine and out here you can see when I switch on the lights okay, just switch on these lights I'm going to try to go slowly uh, hold on need to just put this one on oh that one's not working okay you may be able to see the spinning wheel can you see that it's a spinning wheel and I do spin wool but not just at the moment I would do that in the deep of the midwinter when the days are very short it's nice to get into the sitting room in front of a nice fire in the stove and do some spinning and there's a little rascal sitting on the windowsill that's beauty so <clears throat> that's just looking out towards the east and you can see all the beautiful Lacestria formosa which grows widely during the summer here and that's just outside the window and I have a little collection of things beautiful Celtic cross um, little box that a friend of mine got me for a birthday years ago little Celtic figurines um, a beautiful goddess statue that's very very heavy that's made out of iron it's been forged in iron. A little silvery blue lizard and another pair of glasses. I leave glasses everywhere because I'm forever forgetting where my glasses are. And look, just testament to that, there's another pair of glasses up there. <clears throat> and then all the bulbs that I use here in the cottage, by the way, are low wattage. So that one in that beautiful, um, and that's again, that's a, like a forged iron lamp. Um, I think that's about 11 watts or something. So it's very low electricity usage here. That's looking out towards the west. See the light just fading there in the west. As I look towards the west I'm very mindful, very mindful of all the people in Texas who are enduring the floods. Very mindful of them. May the floods recede very soon. Now, talking about being mindful, um, quite a few of you have asked me about my little altar. And first of all, I want to say that setting up a little altar in one's home is to do with your own spiritual development. And when I was a child at school, I used to see the nature table at school as part of what I perceived to be an altar. For me, that was an altar because children brought things from nature into school and it was placed upon the nature table. So that's my original concept of what an altar is. It's somewhere where you can leave things and you can look at them and you can meditate on them and you can pray if that's what you want to do. There are so many religions, there are so many different concepts of spirituality. Each one to their own and bless you all. 
For me, I absolutely love Mother Earth and it's a very tangible um, source of inspiration for me because I see her, I live with her, she's there all the time. So my little altar is very simple. It's the top of a bookcase. So I have some candles. I love candlelight. It's very soft. It's very reassuring. It's also very ri ritualistic. And you know, we do need to have more rituals in our lives because rituals help to slow us down and help us to focus and help us to feel a deep sense of contentment. And I remember as a child going to the church and lighting candles and I love doing that. And it allowed me to focus on people who were no longer with me. So my little altar has candles. There's a little incense stick burning and I've actually put a lemon that I've grown. It doesn't look like a lemon anymore. Um, but it's there in that beautiful metal candelabra, candlestick, candlestick. So there, there it is, just burning away. Beautiful, beautiful smell. It's gorgeous. Down here I have a little bowl full of seeds. Lots and lots of seeds that I've saved here at Belton Cottage. I have a beautiful handmade um, statue of a goddess and it's a woman. She reminds me of my mother. Beside her in the beautiful vase with the with the circles of life, the spirals of life on it, is another hand carved ornament and this is a serpent and the serpent represents regeneration because of course she's, she sheds her skin and she comes into another new skin so all the time there is that beautiful regeneration going on. Now if you look into the very ancient understanding of the goddess um, and the goddess culture exists, has existed for thousands and th tens of thousands of years, long before um, there was any understanding of organised religion. Um, the, the goddess herself represented life and fertility and regeneration and nurturing. And all those beautiful aspects, all those beautiful feelings, I should say, because I feel that very deeply, of what my mother gave to me. So my mother is no longer with me um, in human form, but I do believe that she's with me all the time, and I often speak to her. Now there's a little candle burning in front of the goddess, and then this here is a beautiful piece of rose quartz which I dug out of the land here at Beltona. So that's got a lot of um, symbolism to it and those of you who understand the meaning of minerals and rocks will understand about the rose quartz. This is a little wooden box that my brother Cormac made for me. And as you can see, it's beautifully decorated with Celtic symbols. But by the way, let me just say that those of you who um, are not familiar with Ireland or um, the Irish culture and the very ancient Celtic culture, which is very much intertwined and interwoven into it, they're all woven together, um, you should be aware that here in Ireland we have no problem with images of the goddess. And in fact, there are mountain ranges here in Ireland um, where um, 
um, our, our ancient ancestors have identified, say, two mountains together as breasts, and they actually refer to them and, um, as paps, which is the um, uh, it's it's the old Irish word for breasts. So quite often you have mountain ranges like one in Kerry, um, where um, I think I think there's a mountain range down there called the Paps of Anu. So we we are continually seeing the goddess in um, in the landscape. So this is very important in understanding in understanding Belton Cottage and how I live. Um, the mother is very important. For example, here in Ireland, it's one of the very few cultures where lineage, um, bloodline, is handed down through the mother. So um, if you wanted to get an Irish passport, you would have to um, either have been born here or your mother or your grandmother born here. Because in Ireland, the saying goes, um, you can never tell who your father is, but you certainly know your mother. So <laughs> that's also in line, actually, with um, with uh, uh, Jewish people. Um, their culture and their um, their uh, lineage is coming down through the mother. That's very interesting. There's very interesting crossovers there in culture. So anyway, um, I'll get back to my little altar here. So up here, there's a, a beautiful little little sculpture of a female goddess. Um, over to the right on the windowsill, there's a little bust of Demeter. And she's got some blackberries on her head. Um, back here, there's a little, just hold this, um, little chimes. I love to hear the sound of the chimes and uh, especially you know when I'm wanting to think about something or think about someone, meditate on someone, say a little inner prayer. Now hanging from this goddess is a, is a bunch, a complete bunch of um, beautiful greenery that I picked and what I did um, I was walking up from um, the gate I was walking up the driveway the laneway and I just was in a very calm thoughtful state and without even thinking or contriving it I just picked lots of green and berries that were growing and initially what I did I wrapped them in some ivy and then I got up to the house here and I wrapped them then in some cord and I hung them up and the reason why I hung them up is because I can go back to that moment in time when I was picking these and thinking about what I was thinking so I brought a little bit of that in here to remind me of some people that I'm very mindful of at the moment that I want to hold close to my heart and be, th be mindful, be thoughtful of them. So, um... That's it really. It's 
25 to 9. Gosh, 20 minutes. There's my beautiful Sammy Bear. Sammy Bear absolutely loves Jack. So he was just sitting outside with him there. So the last minute, I'm just going to let you hear the bird song here. <laughs> 